All right, so we are going to wrap up chapter 3 with this video um, in section 3.3 to uh, titled Kramer's rule. Um, we've been talking about determinants the last couple of videos, and I wanted to show y'all a brief little application where determinants can be used to solve linear systems. So let's talk about what Kramer's rule says. So Kramer's rule says that if you let A be an invertible n by n matrix, then for any B that exists in the nth dimension, the unique solution of X for the matrix equation has entries given by the following formula. So, first of all, this little formula right here, we're going to go into more detail in just a second about it. A couple things I want to point out about um, how Kramer's rule works. So, first, the big criteria is that A must be an invertible matrix. And how this is going to relate to determinants in just a second is that at the end of our last video, remember that a matrix A is only invertible if the determinant is not zero. So if you take the determinant of the original matrix and you get zero, Kramer's rule does not apply. The other thing to note here in Kramer's rule is that Kramer's rule only finds a unique solution. It does not find infinitely many solutions. If you get infinitely many solutions and that's the answer to a system, Kramer's rule will also not work. It won't find one of the answers. It just won't be able to find any of them. All right. Now to your formula. If you want to find all of the X subscripts of your equation, so X sub I's, how you will do that is you will take the determinant of A sub I B divided by the determinant of the original matrix A. Now, part of this is pretty self-explanatory. Determinant of A is just determinant of A. You take the determinant of the original matrix. Now you can see why you can't get zero in that particular area. This top part, when it says the determinant of A sub I times B, that is what's going to end up changing. So what this is called, and there's not really an official name for it, but essentially we're going to do a type of column substitution to develop what A sub I B is. Now, when we get to our first example, I'm going to go step by step of how we do this, but that subscript represents the column that's going to be substituted in order to find the determinant and find the values, all right? The reason we cover this is that in some disciplines, and once again, all of y'all are probably in different disciplines as you watch this video, Kramer's rule is very popular in how you study the solutions of the matrix equation and how it's affected by changes in the entries of B. So if you have a consistent system on the left-hand side and you're trying to vary the B part of your augmented matrix or your system, as you adjust that, Kramer's rule can be done to calculate things very quickly. Now, typically, most people who do Kramer's rule use it in a more of a computer programming sense because this can take a little bit of time to do by hand. So as I put down here at the very bottom, Hand calculations of Kramer's rule can be very time consuming. So for today, I'm only going to focus on two by twos, and then we will do one example of a three by three to show you how it works in that sense. We're not going to go any higher than that because these problems would just take way too long in order to do um, hand calculations of Kramer's rule. So let's begin with a nice two by two matrix equation. Now, I know we could do this by uh, row reduction pretty quick, but I want you to practice the idea of Kramer's rule because you'll have to do it on your assignments. So what is the solution to 3x1 minus 2x2 equals 3 and negative 4x1 plus 6x2 equals negative 5 using Kramer's rule? So in order to do Kramer's rule, here's the basic idea. First thing you want to do is you want to define all of your matrices. So in this case, we are going to define matrix A as your coefficient matrix like we've done since day one. That would be 3, negative 2, negative 4, 6. Then you're going to have to define a column substitution matrix for every letter you're trying to find. Now, since we're trying to solve for x1 and x2 here, you'll need two different matrices to do that. So the first thing I want to show you is how you define what we call a sub 1b. So this is your first column substitution matrix. And what this says is that since your subscript is one, you're going to replace the first column of matrix A 
with the numbers that are on the right hand side of your equations, which we call the B vector typically. So I'm going to let the first column now be 3, negative 5, and my second column of A doesn't change. So still negative 2, 6. And likewise, when we go to find our column substitution matrix A sub 2B, I'm going to replace the second column of the original matrix A with 3, negative 5, while the first column 3, negative 4 remains the same. Now, your formula that I gave you on the last slide says that, the, that, the, that x sub i, so every subscript of x, can be found by taking the determinant of a sub i b divided by the determinant of a. Since we're going to need all three of these determinants, let's find them all now. Since these are all nice 2 by 2 matrices, this will go pretty quick. If you want to find the determinant of matrix A, so you do your formula, that would be 18 minus 8, which is 10. If you want to find the determinant of A sub 1B, that would be 18 minus 10, which is 8. And finally, if you want to find the determinant of A sub 2B, that would be negative 15 minus a negative 12 which is negative three. So to find your final answers here, if you want to find X sub one, the formula says you take the determinant in this case, and I'll write it out the first time. This will be the determinant of A sub one B over the determinant of A. So plugging in the numbers you just found, that would be eight divided by 10, which simplifies into four fifths. You continue this for every subscript of X you need to find. So X sub 2 would be the determinant of A sub 2B divided by the determinant of A, which would be negative 3 over 10, which doesn't reduce. So when we're trying to find our answer here, so let's say we're trying to find vector X as our solution, we found X sub 1 to be 4 fifths, and we found X sub 2 to be negative 3 tenths. So this would be your vector solution to the matrix equation using Kramer's rule. And as you can see, we never had to use any row reduction steps. This is how you solve a system of, of, of equations by only using determinants. Right? So that was a nice simple two by two. It takes a little bit more effort to do a three by three because finding the determinants of a three by three is more challenging than a two by two. But I think it'd be good for everybody to see an example of how this works. So here's our here's our three dimensional system. You've got x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 is 8. Negative x1 plus 2x3 is 4. And 3x1 plus x2 is also 4. So I'm going to write a little bit smaller here because I'm going to have to do a little bit more work this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define matrix A as the coefficient matrix. Make sure don't let those zeros throw you off here that I snuck in there. All right. And now since we've got three different solutions we have to find, X1, X2, and X3, I need to write out all three of those column substitution matrices. So we're going to have a sub 1b. So remember, you replace the first column with the numbers of your b vector. So that would be 8, 4, 4. And then you would have everything else the same. 3, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0. a sub 2b. This time I would leave the first column alone. Substitute my b vector in for the second column and leave the third column alone. Down here at the very bottom, sorry about this, a sub 3b, we're going to leave the first two columns the same, and then substitute our b column into the third column. So now, as we saw in the last one, and I may have to extend this slide in a second if I need more room, but you need to find the determinant of all of these. Now, that we this is where you have to go back to the last two videos where you can do cofactor expansion 
If you want to do row reduction with our properties we learned in the last video, you can do that. Your job is just to find all three, all four determinants here. So in this case, to go a little bit quicker, I'm going to do cofactor expansion. But if you would like to do the row reduction, just make sure you go to the side, do your row reduction. Remember, if you need to change the determinants because of your properties, make sure you do that accordingly. So what I am going to do is to find the determinant of A, uh, what has a zero in it. Let's pick the third row, just for the heck of it. So remember, if you pick an odd or an even row, you start positive. So this would be three, which is positive three, times the determinant of its submatrix, which would be three, one, zero, two. You alternate signs, so that would be minus one, times the determinant of its submatrix, which is 1, 1, negative 1, 2, and then plus 0 times, we don't care, because that's going to end up going to 0. So when you work this out, you're going to end up getting 3 times, let's see, the determinant of that submatrix is 6 minus 0, minus 1 times the determinant of that submatrix would be 2 minus a negative 1, so that's going to end up being 18, let's see, that's 3 minus 3. So you get a determinant of A as being 15. And I'm going to circle each of these numbers I find just so I can find them a little bit quicker in a minute. One down, three to go. So let's keep going. Um, actually, I'm going to stay consistent until I have to change. I'm going to use row 3 again. This time, though, it's going to end up being 4 times the determinant of the submatrix, which is the same thing. Once again, minus one oops, times the determinant of this submatrix, which would be a little different. It's now eight, one, four, two. And then you're back to plus zero times we don't care. So when I work this out, it would be four times six minus zero minus one times 16 minus four. And let's see, that's four times six, which is 24 minus 1 times 12, which is 12. So you get the determinant of a sub 1b as 12. All right, halfway there. Um, let's just keep going. I'm going to use row 3 again because there's a 0 there. So that's going to be 3 times the determinant of, what's that, 8, 1, 4, 2, minus 4 this time times the determinant of 1, 1, negative 1, 2, and for the third time in a row, plus 0 times whatever. Remember, we like using 0 and when we can because it makes us have to find less determinants. So this would be 3 times, that is 16 minus 4, and then minus 4 times 2 minus a negative 1. All right, so doing a little bit of arithmetic here, that's 12, 12 times three is 36. Uh, and that's three inside the parentheses, three times four is 12. So 36 minus 12 is 24. And finally, on my last little matrix here, I'm gonna have to change it up a little bit because I don't have a zero in the bottom row and I really wanna use a zero. So um, let's go to a column to be different. I'm gonna use column two. Now, remember, when you pick an even row or column, you have to start your alternating off with a negative term. So this would technically be negative 3 times the determinant of its submatrix, which would be negative 1, 4, 3, 4. And then it goes to plus 0 times we don't care. It goes away. And then you're back to minus 1 times the determinant of its submatrix which would be 1, 8, negative 1, 4. So this will become negative 3 times, that is negative 4 minus 12, minus 1 times 4 minus, I'm going to squeeze it in here, sorry y'all, 4 minus a negative 8. So doing some calculations here, you may need a calculator here, remember you can use a non-graphing one if you'd like. Uh, that's negative 16. Negative 16 times negative 3 is 48. Eight, sorry. 
And then four minus a negative eight is 12. So that's going to be minus 12, which is 36. So once again, don't feel like you have to write as small as I did there. I'm just trying to keep it all on one slide so you can follow along. Just make sure you can find the four determinants here. Now, back to the top of the screen, I'm going to write our answers down. So remember our general formula x sub i is equal to the determinant of a sub i b divided by the determinant of a. So you're going to take the three determinants you found for a1 through a3b and divide them all by the original determinant of a, and we can get, of our, num get our numbers. So let's see. x sub 1 would come out to be 12 over 15, which does simplify into 4 fifths. X sub 2 is going to be 24 over 15, which those share a 3 in common, so that goes into 8 fifths. And I'm going to come to the other side. Oh, well, I'll come right below here. X sub 3 is going to end up being 36 over 15, which those also share a 3 in common, so that would be 12 fifths. So now that I have all three simplified solutions, I can write my answer in vector form. So vector x in this case is going to equal the three dimensional vector of four fifths. Then we found eight fifths and then we found 12 fifths as our three entries of the solution. And so little jam pack there, I do apologize for that. But like I said, I'm trying to keep it on one slide on most problems if I can, just so you can see where everything's coming from. But like I said, later on, we get to a few longer problems in chapter five and six. I may have to extend to a new slide, so I'm not having to cram it all in. All right. So now that we've seen two examples of Kramer's rule, a two, uh, a two an X1 and X2, so a two by two matrix, and now we're seeing three by threes. Let's just do one more problem. Like I said, not a very long section because it's just kind of a basic application I wanted to go over. Let me show you another way where I've seen Kramer's rule used. Instead of actually finding a specific solution, what if you're trying to describe the solution where you don't actually know the numeric value of all the parameters? So maybe something like this. I want you to determine the values of the parameter S for which the system has a unique solution and then describe the solution. So with, with, since we don't know all the very uh, coefficients of our coefficient matrix, we, we have these unknown S's here, we have to write this in the most general way that we can. So now the best way to do that is we're gonna do Kramer's rule again. Let me show you how this helps us get to the solution quicker. So I'm gonna once again define my coefficient matrix A, which is just a two by two. That would be S, two S, 3, and 6s. Then you would have your matrix A sub 1b. So remember, you're going to replace column 1 with the variables from the vector b, which is just coefficients here, negative 1, 4, and we'll leave the 2s and 6s alone. And then we'll move down to A sub 2b. So I'm going to leave the s and the 3 alone from column 1, and replace column two with negative one, four. Your job is to find all three determinants now. So let's do that. The first determinant, so the determinant of A would be six S squared minus six S. The determinant of A sub one B would be negative six S minus eight S, which does simplify to negative 14 S. And then the determinant of a sub 2b would be 4s minus a negative 3, which is just 4s plus 3. All right, so we want to write our answers here. So over here on the right, I want to find x sub 1. So remember to find x sub 1, you're going to take the determinant of a sub 1b, which was negative 14s and divide that by the determinant of A, which is 6S squared minus 6S. Now, we do have some things that simplify here. All three terms in this answer all share a two in common and they all share an S in common. 
So we can cancel a two and an S out of every term. So when you cancel a two S out of everything, you should just get a negative seven on the bottom. And then canceling a two S on the bottom would give you a three S minus three. Likewise, we can find X2. I'm going to take my determinant of A sub 2B, which is 4S plus 3, and divide it by the 6S squared minus 6S. Now, this time, there's nothing in common. They don't share any numbers in common, all the terms. They don't share any variables, so that's the best you're going to get. So you've answered your first question, all right? You've, well, actually, you've answered the second question. We're describing the solution here. So we can claim that vector S will always fit the form of negative seven over three S minus three, and then four S plus three over six S squared minus six S. Now, since S is a parameter and not a guaranteed number, you're gonna have to go a step further and talk about what will make this unique. All right, so question one actually said, what values of X guarantee this to be a unique solution? As we've talked about before, if you look at your solutions here, the only problem you're going to have is that if the bottom of either one of these descriptions becomes zero, that's an issue. So you want to make sure that the bottom two terms do not become zero. So when we're trying to describe our parameter, I know two things have to be true. 3s minus 3 cannot be 0, and I also know that 6s squared minus 6s cannot be 0. So let's see what those descriptions give us. On the first one, if you add 3 to both sides and then divide by 3, we know that s cannot be 1. Okay, so there's one restriction. On the second equation, um, since it's quadratic, we have to factor. I'm going to take out the common 6s which leaves an S minus one left over. And then if you set both of your factors equal to zero, or I guess in this case, not equal to zero, you pick up two restrictions. S cannot be zero from dividing by six. And from the second one, you pick up the same restriction that we already knew from the first one. So putting this all together, if you wanted to tell somebody what are the values of S, which will give you a unique solution, you would answer that S can be any value you want it to be, except for zero and one. So whatever these parameters represent, and that would be depending on how you modeled this system in this case, you could run this system for every single S parameter, except the zero parameter and the one parameter for whatever those represent. And so that's a way that we can do it using Kramer's rule. This would have been very difficult to do with row reduction because we don't know what S is and it's an unknown. So brief little video there, but I wanted to show you a couple of applications of where determinants can be used in systems. And I thought Kramer's rule would be a good illustration of that. So that ends my video for section 3.3. And that also ends the videos that we're going to cover in chapter 3. Starting with the next video, we're going to actually move into chapter five, which chapter five is one of the big chapters in this class. We're going to talk a little bit about eigenvalues and eigenvectors and different ways that those show up in linear algebra.